Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda or Swamiji is a revolutionary spiritual master of our millennium. He walks on a mission to heal the world through the powers of meditation. Swamiji chose to be born as Raja Shekharan in the sacred town of Tiruvannamalai in southern India. Mastering yoga and rigorous spiritual practices at a young age, Raja Shekharan finally left home for the Himalayas in the quest of the ultimate truth. This quest led his feet to the holiest of pilgrimage spots and to great spiritual masters in India and Tibet. After years of wandering, study and intense penance, the boy Rajasekharan experienced the ultimate flowering of consciousness on January 1st, 2000. Rajasekharan became Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda. Guided by a divine vision, Swamiji set up Dhyana Pita, a worldwide movement for meditation in Bidadi near Bangalore in India. At the ashram, seekers aged between 8 and 80, live and learn in the Master's presence. Ananda Healing, a unique healing science formulated by Swamiji, has been baffling the medical world by curing diseases ranging from migraine to cancer. Qualified individuals are also initiated by Swamiji into Ananda Healing. Today there are over 300 healing centers and over 700 healers worldwide. The Ananda Spurana program is an intensive workshop for chakra healing and meditation that brings together philosophies and techniques from the world's major spiritual streams. The Nityananda Spurana program or NSP is an advanced level course where participants work on all their seven energy bodies. Ananda Yoga is an introductory program to help integrate meditation into our normal lifestyle with practical and powerful techniques to cope with work stress, ill health and failing relationships. Swamiji also reaches out to people with dhyana satsangs or mass meditation camps that take meditation to the remotest towns and villages of India. Swamiji travels the world committed to spreading awareness about the role of individual transformation in shaping global communities. With a pragmatic vision that links Eastern philosophy to the Western scientific thought, Swamiji continues to awaken humanity to the significance of spirituality in our time. Today's subject is love 
to survive. Many of us think love is a choice. Experience of love and expression of love is a choice. If you want, you can have it. If you don't want, there's no need. We always think experiencing and expressing the love, of course, first is experiencing love, then only expressing. Unless you experience, you can't express. Experiencing love and expressing the love is a choice. No, it's not a choice as we think. It is a basic necessity to be alive. If you can express love, if you can experience love, that will I think that is the only way of being alive. If you don't experience love or express love, you may inhale and exhale, you may breathe in and breathe out, but you can't say you are alive. There are so many animals for breathing in and breathing out. There are so many other lives over there in the planet Earth. You can't say all of them are alive. All of them are living. Even to feel that you are living Love is a basic necessity. Let us look little deeply into the meaning of the word love because the word is too much contaminated and loaded by so many different meanings, interpretations, commentaries. Leo about the idea of selfless, great spiritual love. We don't even have to bother about that. Let us first start talking about the normal, simple love with all the possessiveness, jealousy, what all the side effects it causes. With everything, even that love does a lot, does a lot to your body and to your mind. Next we will see the selfless spiritual love or a matured love. First, let us analyze the love or the feelings which we share in our day-to-day -day life, which has got all its side effects or after, after effects, possessiveness, jealousy and anger, all this, all this happens as after effect of ordinary love. Even this love does lot to your body, does lot to your mind. The other day I was reading a magazine, there is a survey report I was amazed to see the reports. The title itself is, says, Live Forever. The title says, Live Forever. Eleven techniques, eleven important instructions to extend your life at least twenty years. They have given 11 important instructions with their standard statistics survey reports which is supported by scientific survey reports. 
and simple instructions. All the eleven belong to love. All the eleven belong to love. They say even carrying a pet animal creates a hormone in your body which makes you feel ease with your body. Even carrying or spending few minutes with pet animals does a lot to your system. Caring pet animals can do so much means Surely caring for your husband or caring for your wife will do a lot more. And how people die if they are single or widowers. And how life is extended. How low chance of cancer, depression, if you are caring or being cared by somebody. Even what we call as ordinary love, simple infatuation can do miracles for your body, for your mind. It gives you deep feeling of healing, deep well-being. A small analysis from Tantra. Tantra says five kinds of restlessness happens to you which can be healed by an ordinary lover, by ordinary simple human love. When I say by ordinary simple human love, what you all share in your family life the day-to-day -day caring for each other. A simple, I am not speaking about high spiritual love, that we will see later on. High spiritual love, what we call as bhakti, or what we call as devotion, the selfless love, seeing the whole world as a god. All those things are second. First I am talking, the simple practical love which you share with some reason, either because that person supports you socially or that person will stand for you when you are when you face difficult times or just you feel that person is mentally support for you is psychologically is a support for you anything for any reason or maybe you need, you want a good certificate from him, a name from him. For any reason, you may show your love. Even love given with a reason heals you from five kinds of restlessness. First thing, restlessness happens due to place. Sometimes in particular place you feel restless particular situation, you feel restless. If you move from that place, if you move from that situation, you feel that things will be settled. Even in that type, that kind of situation, even that kind of places, a simple expression of love, expressing the love in body language, can make situation much better, can heal the situation. Next, physical restlessness. Physical restlessness is a tension in your body. Any tension in your body, any uneasiness in your body can be released when you express love to somebody, to some person. You may ask, how can love take away the physical restlessness? How can love take away? How can love help me to come out of the physical restlessness? You can see in your own life, 
you can see if you look into your life deeply the mother who has got a child a kid to take care continuously again and again she feels rejuvenated always taking care of the children taking care of kids is not easy job continuously you feel rejuvenated the rejuvenation happens because of the love and care not because of anything else feeling of tension feeling of restlessness in your body is taken away when you care for somebody when you smile at somebody when you express love in your body language many times you can see in your life in day to day life you can see you may be lying depressed or feeling sick but when some of your friends come when somebody comes whom you love whom you really feel and you get up and sit and spend some time with them by the time you finish your conversation you feel rejuvenated you feel fresh when you really love somebody you express your energy there are four things you need to understand love intelligence energy and bliss all these four are four sides of a same pillar love intelligence energy and bliss when your being expresses through head it is intelligence when your being expresses through heart it is love when your being expresses through your being the navel chakra it is energy when your being just relaxes without moving it's bliss all the four are same thing same phenomena called same phenomena is addressed with four different names so whenever love happens to you whenever you express love you express energy also love is a concentrated caring energy so naturally when you express energy you can channel for energy when you are channel for energy not only you help you are also help and mental restlessness of course any mental restlessness can be just healed by love when you express love that is why that magazine says caring the pet animals are playing with kids can avoid heart attacks they say caring pet animals are playing with kids can postpone any fatal disease heart attack any mental restlessness can be healed can be postponed by the expression of love by expression of simple love in your body language next restlessness of emotion restlessness belongs to emotion mental restlessness is different mental restlessness is like intellectual emotional restlessness emotional restlessness means restlessness which happens to you which cannot be controlled just by a few words just by consoling yourself just by trying to help yourself by words this emotional restlessness can also be healed when you express your love the expression of love when you start radiating love simply it can flood your being with energy your being can be opened to the higher energies it can heal your emotional restlessness ultimately the spiritual restlessness your love 
but the teacher or a master can heal the spiritual restlessness. Many people come and tell me, Swami, just the presence of an enlightened person makes us meditate. Whenever we meet Swamis and Saints, Gurus, in front of them we are able to meditate. Why we are not able to do it in the house? Whenever you meet the great persons, sons, swamis and saints, you start relating, you start expressing your love towards them. Love towards them can totally heal your spiritual restlessness. You need to understand this word spiritual restlessness. Spiritual restlessness means you can't sit with yourself. You can see so many people. They can sit with others. They can sit with the TV. They can sit with newspaper. They can't sit with themselves. That is what I call spiritual restlessness. They can give appointment to everybody, but they can't give appointment to themselves. Many times, if you observe, you can observe. When I speak, I give long gaps between my words. That is actually to bring down your spiritual restlessness. People who are not spiritually interested, people who are not really matured enough to listen to these great ideas, they can never sit and listen to the, the, the spiritual discourses. At least with me. Because continuously your mind needs food. Your mind needs something. It is jumping from thought to thought, thought to thought, thought to thought. When I give the gap, it creates a feeling of boredom. It just creates a feeling of boredom. And it says, all right, let us go. All right, let us move. Only a man who can sit with himself can listen to these great words. One more thing. If he can't even sit with himself, how can he be helped even if he listens to my words? No. He won't be helped even if he listens to my words. That is the reason people, many people ask me, Swamiji, when you give gaps, what do you mean? Why do you give so much of gaps between your words? Even when I speak in my mother tongue, especially in the public discourse, I give a lot of gaps. Sometimes I suddenly stop in between the sentence and even 30-40 seconds I give gap. The mind is such, it continuously asks, waits for the next word. Why you feel so comfortable in front of TV and cinema? Because material is just pushed inside your being. So much of stuff, so much of ideas, so many things are sent inside your being. Your rest restlessness is supported and increased then you feel really comfortable. Your mind is aggravated and any food which is spicy, why do you enjoy so much the spicy food? Again, too much of stuff is sent inside. Whenever your restlessness is aggravated in the same way, the itching sensation, spicy food, Watching movie, all these things are equal to, equal to itching sensation. When you scratch, you feel comfortable. Spicy food is nothing but scratching the tongue. It gives a sort of a comfort by scratching. Same way, too much of materials being pushed inside. 
too much of stuff being thrown into your mind, especially watching movies and watching the TV. Your intellect is just pushed aside. Your consciousness is just pushed, pushed aside. Simply, the information is flooded inside your being. You should understand one small thing about uh, watching movies. If you go in the road 30 kilometers per hour, you can see all the signboards and read, see the trees, whatever is there. If you go in 130 kilometers per hour, you won't be able to see clearly. Why? Because the frames, number of frames which changes per second is too much. If the number of frames are less than six, you can see and clearly read or understand. If it is more than six, your consciousness cannot relate to your eyes. Your consciousness cannot relate. In TV or media, it is 12 to 16 frames per second. So naturally, your consciousness is just pushed aside. Simply that, informations are flooded inside your system. Because your consciousness is pushed aside, you totally merge with that scenes. You know for sure that actor is alive. But if you see a scene in which the actor is dead, immediately you deal with the scene. You are educated, intellectual, logical person. You know it is just an acting. But you laugh with the screen. You cry with the screen. Your moods go up and down along with the scenes. How it happens? Because your consciousness is just pushed aside and information is flooded inside your system beyond your logic. That is why you feel you are forgetting yourself. Scratching spicy food and movie, all these things are just flooding things into your system. Naturally, it creates a deep restlessness as a side effect. If you have that side, deep restlessness, you cannot sit and listen to these ideas. And I make it sure the people with restlessness don't sit because not only they won't understand, they will misunderstand. And misunderstanding, these great truths are very dangerous. Half truth is much worse than a lie. Half truth is worse than a lie. If you do not know at all, at least you are out of danger. But if you know half half, then you are in a big danger. So I always see if you have at least this much of patience to wait and to listen to these words, naturally your spiritual restlessness comes down. Asking for the next thought, next thought slowly, slowly comes down. You became so passive. These thoughts not only touches your head, it directly touches your heart. If you are totally passive, your emotion opens. Your emotional level being opens. If you are totally relaxed, ease with yourself, without too much of thoughts, without too many crowded thoughts, you will see your being just takes the whole thing inside. In Vedanta, they call Shravana Manana Mididhyasana. 
listening, meditating and practicing. If your mind is calm, there is no need to meditate afterwards separately. The very listening can create experience. Very listening can become experience. Very shravana can lead to experience. According to me, if your shravana is not proper, even manna cannot help. Contemplating on it cannot help. If you are properly listening, the very right listening itself will give you the experience. Jai Krishnamurti says, listening is God. Deep, total listening without restlessness itself is divine. That itself is God. If you look deeply into your being, the very presence of the Master heals the spiritual restlessness. Love towards the Master heals the spiritual restlessness. Your love, even if it is simple, normal love, it heals totally all the five restlessnesses. Let us look into the higher type of love. Love which is experienced by Meera, by Chaitanya, by Ramakrishna, of course, by Ramana Maharishi. All these great saints, Ramakrishna says, my love for the divine is totality of three major kinds of love. A miser's love for his money, a chaste wife's love for her husband, and mother's love for child. All the three put together and something more is my love for divine. Of course, we won't be able to understand just by this three definition, three words. It's almost like a feeling of being one with the other, falling in tune with the other, falling in tune with the other person, other being. It's a ecstatic, highest expression of your being. Meera, just by the word Krishna, puts her into ecstasy. Just the word Krishna can put her into the ecstasy. In Narada Bhakti Sutras, the Sutra says, if the tears roll down in your eyes listening to God's name, the divine name, be sure that is your last janma. That is your last birth. The first teaching of Ramakrishna in his Gospel, there is a book called Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. The first teaching, he says, if you can shed tears when you listen to the divine name, last name, be sure that is your last birth. Just the remembrance of the divine puts them into divine ecstasy, love, feeling of joy. Anamacharya, if you listen to his kirtans, if you listen to his songs towards Balaji, he feels that divine is there. It's an experience for him. In some of the verses, Ranamarshi abuses Arunachala. He just abuses, blames. What are you doing? You are the house owner or you are my husband. But when the thieves are coming inside and taking me, what are you doing? Oh Arunachala, he is asking Arunachala. Beautiful verse. Five senses are the thieves who are coming inside my house 
and trying to take my being. You are my husband. What are you doing? Seeing this. You are the Atman and you are my husband. You are inside me. What are you doing? Don't you feel ashamed of letting your wife be being taken away by somebody else? Are you mad? He is asking. He blames Arunachala. When somebody asked, Bhagavan, how can you say all these things towards God? Bhagavan says, For you all it is a faith, just a belief. For me, he is a living being. For me, he is a living being. A small story. One devotee, he was continuously praying to Vishnu for 10 years. But somehow Vishnu did not do darshan for him. He was intensely praying, praying, praying. But Vishnu did not appear. Then he decided, all right, now onwards I am going to pray to Shiva. So he pushed the Vishnu statue aside and brought on Shiva, started praying, doing puja. He lit the incense and started doing puja. He saw the incense slowly going to the nose of Vishnu. The smell is spreading all over the room, naturally it will go to Vishnu's nose also. Immediately he thought, so many years I worshipped him, he did not give darshan. Why should this smell go to his nose? He jumped and caught hold of the nose of the Vishnu, <laughs> Vishnu Vigraha, and started pressing it as tightly as possible. And he started shouting, you fellow, you should not smell my incense. Only Shiva should smell. Ten years I prayed to you, but you never gave darshan. You should not have the smell of my incense. He was just pressing it as hard as possible. Suddenly he saw he is pressing somebody's nose really. He saw somebody is there really. And he is holding somebody's nose. He opened the eyes and saw Vishnu was giving darshan to him. Vishnu was there appearing in form. He left the hand and started begging, O oh Lord, how many years I prayed to you, you did not appear, but why did you come? When I was pressing your nose and not letting you to smell the incense, Vishnu says, all these years you prayed to me, that is true, no doubt, but you never felt so intensely, I am alive and living being. Always you thought I am a statue. When you prayed in front of the statue, you thought it is only statue. But when you punished, you really felt I am alive in that statue. When you punished, you felt the intensity was so much. Your feeling was so deep that I am in this statue. That is why you, you, you punished the statue. Will you go and hold the house of statue? No. Unless you have a deep feeling, it is God, you will not punish. So even when you punish, you have the deep feeling that I am in this statue. Of course, when you have that deep feeling, I have to come down to bless you, to give you the darshan. When you prayed, you did not have that deep feeling. It was only half off. But when you punish, you had a total feeling. So I was waiting for your total feeling. When you have a total feeling, I come down. There are so many strange incidences which expresses the power of love. The love can do miracles in your being, not only in the mental level, even in the physical level. Even in the physical level. Ramakrishna says, after the puja, sometimes I will get suspicion whether really mother is alive in this vidraga or I am just wasting my time worshipping the stove. So he says, he used to keep a small thread in front of the Devi's nose and check whether the Devi is breathing or not. 
he says i have always seen the thread moving thread flowing in the inhaling and exhaling air of devi and a strange thing still now if you go to calcutta you can see in calcutta there is a tradition the devi will be decorated with the conch bangles bangles made out of conch shell they will cut the conch shell and make bangles they will decorate the devi's hands with the conch shell kali has got four hands one these two are abaya and narada and these two are one with the shira means the cut head now that is with sword the sword can be removed you can insert the bandage this hand is just empty these two hands are empty so you can directly insert the bandage but you can never insert the bandage in the hand in which she is holding the head it is not possible because its head is too big you cannot insert the bandage one day suddenly the assistant pujari sir ramakrishna noticed mother was having a bandage in her hand in her hands conch bandage they immediately went and surprised it they saw it they had a close look whether it was broken and inserted it's a full bandage the stone vigraha is wearing a full conch bandage without any damage in it no damage a full conch bandage is in the hands of mother they were shocked and surprised how can this go inside impossible but she is having a bandage always the only three hands they will decorate with the bandage the fourth hand will be left suddenly one day they saw the bandage is there in her hand they rushed to ramakrishna and asked they asked what happened how can it, how is it possible mother is having a bandage in her hands and they were um, they were feeling really surprise not only surprise some some started suspecting whether this guy broke that head and inserted the bandage because ramakrishna is considered as a man by the koli pujaris for his own unique way of worshiping because before doing an nivedya he will eat that food little bit and see the taste then he will offer it he will do all sorts of weird things which shastras cannot accept but his love was such mother accepted everything but the pujaris always had a suspicion as they had a thought this guy may be little mad or crazy they thought how can the bank will be there in our hand If you go to Calcutta, still now you can see the bandage. Still now it is there, a original conch bandage in the hands of mother. Impossible to explain. No scientific explanation or no logical explanation. We rush and ask Ramakrishna, how is it possible? What did you do? Ramakrishna said, what is there? I told mother, please let the skull be down for just for a few minutes. I'll insert the bandage, then you can hold it. I told her, she just dropped like a ball of head. I inserted the bandage, then I gave the skull to her. Again, she started holding. That's all. Looks almost like a story, but you will be surprised. Even stone can react. when stone can respond to the love to the real bhakti to the real devotion still now you can see the bangle in mother's hand which is inserted by ramakrishna 100 years ago full conch bangle 
unbroken full conch bandwidth which is impossible no logical explanation but it is there because it is there we have to believe i also tried my best to this belief and they allow the sadhus to go and touch the vigraha sanyasis to go and touch the vigraha the moment i entered inside the first work which i did was i tried my best to shake the bangle and see whether anywhere it is broken not only nowhere it is broken simply impossible to insert it because the size is big such a big skull she is holding and the bangle is only this much width this is the size of the bangle it is there in your hand when you deeply express your love you can see existence relates or responds to you love not only makes you alive it can makes it can make even stone alive with love even stone can become alive you can give life to it you can give life to the whole existence by love just this one thing the love just this one feeling if it is added the whole world becomes juicy thing the whole world becomes alive everything whatever you see whatever you feel whatever you experience becomes a joyful thing one more small incident which love can do there is a story in the life of sadashiva brahmendra one of the great saint who lived in south india he always lived as a naked person he never used any clothes he lived just like a child just like a kid he lived and one day he was walking in ecstasy deep ecstasy and no clothes just like that he was walking 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 that time the country was ruled by muslim kings one nawab nawab means uh, local in charge of muslim king he is like a statesman man who takes care of it state he was coming he saw a naked man walking and did not even respect this guy everyone has to respect the person he was not respected immediately he got angry and took a sword and cut the hand of the sudarshiv brahmendra the saint never bothered he just started walking he continued walking this guy who cut the hand he went away but one of his devotee started weeping saying that oh master you lost your hands you should have respected him you were in some ecstasy what happened why did you do this you lost your hands he said oh is it so don't worry bring the hand she brought the hand and he put it he became all right she asked how great miracle oh swami ji how did it happen Brahmendra says his hatred has destroyed destructed and uh, his hatred was destructive it has destroyed my hand you are love was constructive it has again fixed it that's all his hatred destroyed you are love cleared healed it he says love has got a deep power of healing it's nothing else but your love and ramana maharshi always used to say 
It is the love of the devotees keeps me in the body. Any master comes down and lives in his body just for the sake of love of the devotees. When devotees really want, when devotees really feel, they descend. And not only they descend, they live inside the body because of the love of the devotees. Because masters as such has no karma. They have nothing to achieve. They have nothing to gain. They don't have anything to enjoy, neither positive nor negative. Then why should they be in the body? It is love of the devotees which makes them to live in this body. If you feel the normal simple love and if you express the normal simple love which we call love with all the expectations there's only two kinds of love love with expectation and selfless love when you express the love with expectation even that love heals five different kinds of restlessness as I was telling you Love without expectation again does miracles in your life. Ordinary love gives life to yourself. Selfless love gives life to even the stone which you see and worship. Even ordinary stone can become God. Even ordinary man can become Guru. One more small incident. One guy was searching for a enlightened master. He did not get any master. He was tired. Finally, he decided to go to a forest and whomsoever he sees first in the forest, that person will be his guru. He went to the forest, sat in a road and decided anybody who comes on this road First, he will be my guru. He was sitting, sitting, sitting. After a long time, one guy was coming, but he was running. This person jumped and caught out of that person and caught out of his feet. Oh, Master, you are my guru, you are my God. Please help me, guide me. Actually, the person who was running was a thief. The thief, after stealing in the palace, he went to escape. But this guy cut out of his feet and started praying, Please guide me. Give me enlightenment. You are my God. You are my Guru. The thief said, Aray, I am a thief. Leave me. I have to run. Don't you see I am carrying all the jewels? Police is chasing me. Leave me. I have to run and escape. He said, no, 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 you are my God. Please bless me, give me enlightenment. You are my Guru. I have accepted you as my Guru. He said, Are, I would have killed you, but I, now I don't even have time for that. Even if to kill you, I have to spend 10 minutes. But the, by the time, the police will come and catch me. If I spend 10 minutes on you, leave me. This guy is not ready to let go. No, you are my God. Then the thief said, All right, you say I am your Guru now. Now listen what I, what I say. Close your eyes and sit. Don't open your, your eyes till I say. The moment he said, decided to simply obey. Then the thief escaped. <laughs> then the thief ran away. This poor guy who believed in his instruction, the thief's instruction, is sitting, sitting, sitting. His mind said, he is a thief, why are you listening to his instruction? Better let us search for somebody else. But his conviction and faith, that part said, no, once you decide, decide. He decided, all right, I will Sit. Whether I live or die, I don't bother. 
I will sit and see the end. His deep faith and deep love for the Master's word, you will be surprised. The story says, after a few days, his tapas, his faith started touching the Kailash. So she was to come down to bless him. The Divine has to come down to give darshan. Of course, whether it is mythological story or history, we don't bother. But the idea is truth. What is expressed in this story is a great truth. Love gives life to even the stones. If you express the love with expectation, selfish love, even that heals your five restlessness and gives life to you. If you express the selfless love, it gives life to everything around you. Even a thief can become a guru. Even a stone can become God. Ramakrishna's love for the stone has made the stone as a God. This guy's love for the thief has made thief as a guru. So, when you express selfless love, it gives life to other jivas. So, love to survive and to give life. When you express selfish love, you give life to yourself. When you express selfless love, you give life to everything which is around you. Whether it is selfish or selfless, don't bother. Start expressing love. Let that become your body language. Let that become your lifestyle. Let that become your very life itself. The expression of love, let it become your life and let you feel and experience eternal bliss. Nityananda. Thank you. Any questions? Few questions. Here is two questions. Swamiji, can you please explain to me what part divinity plays in miracle? You say miracles happen. Does divinity make them happen? And then what are the what are you referring to as divinity? This is a question from the Rishi. Understand. Normally, you understand three things. Do ya, things done. Actually, the three things you need to understand. First thing is the person who does. Second thing is the act. The third thing is the thing which is done. Do ya, act and the result. All these three things can be understood in a three way, only logically in this normal plane. In the ultimate plane of divinity, in the ultimate plane of reality, there is no three things. Here you are asking what part divinity plays in miracles. The very miracle itself is a divinity. Now you are, can you ask what part divinity plays in miracles? You are asking for cause, effect and the act. You are asking for a clear cut three divisions. Whether divinity is a cause or whether divinity is an act or whether divinity is an effect. I tell you, in divinity, in the language of divinity, these three things does not exist. Now normally, if I have to raise the hands, First, the brain has to give the order. 
it has to be carried, then the hand has to listen. In the language of normal human beings, these three things has exist, head, hand and command. But in the divinity, this, all the three are one and the same. In the divinity, all these three doesn't exist separately. So the very divinity itself is a miracle. Miracle means it's just a happening. In the whole existence, no two things. Many people come and ask me, Swamiji, who created the world? There is no creator. Please be very clear. Existence is self-created. Universe is a self-created thing. Very creation itself is a creator. It's an intelligence continuously getting created. That is what is a strange thing, little difficult to understand. Understand one thing, it is just a create thing. The process is continuously going on because of its own intelligence. The its own intelligence is creating its own being. There is no three things, creator, created and creation. Just creating. It is a continuous process. Self-expression of intelligence. So any miracle, the very miracle itself is divine. It is self-expression of intelligence. It is self-expression of divinity. There is no three things in divinity ultimately. So, the cause for miracle is divinity. The happening of miracle is divinity. And what happens in the end, result of the miracle is divinity. All the three are referred by the word divinity. Next question. If a person does not even have a quest to seek for a guru, is there anything wrong with that person? something seriously wrong. When you do not know that you do not know, at least you know you do not know. When you don't know that you don't know, you don't even know you don't know. When we don't know that we don't know, we don't search for master. When we don't know that we don't know, we don't even know we don't know. When we know that we don't know, at least we know we don't know. We can start to know. A yeah. small incident which happened in P.D. Auspenskai's life. Yesterday I was talking about Albert Einstein. He is the guy who became enlightened because of physics. We can become enlightened even through physics. And this P.D. Auspan's guy, he became enlightened because of logic and mathematics. If you go deep into any subject, you will become enlightened. Because all paths lead to same goal. There is no need. You should do only puja or meditation. Even if you do scientific research deeply to the end, that is what I always tell you. If you are logically logical, you will go beyond logic. If you are logically logical, you will go beyond the logic. This pretty husband sky, he became enlightened by mathematics. Deep search in logic and mathematics. He met his master, George Gurdjieff, in a casual way. And when P.D. Auspanskai met George Gurdjieff, Auspanskai was a reputed, world famous mathematician. And George Gurdjieff is a simple man. Nobody knows about him. But some energy of George Gurdjieff attracted Auspanskai to go and talk to him. They met casually in some place. And Auspanskai then went to Gurdjieff and asked, I feel you know something, 
which I do not know. Can you teach me? Can you help me? Guruji said, what? You are a world famous mathematician. What can I teach you? You have written such a beautiful book. He has written a book called Tertium Argana. Wonderful book. Third principle, it is called. How can I teach you anything? Auspanskaya said, that I do not know. But one thing I am, I am feeling sure, that you know something more, you can teach me. Then Guruji said, all right, if that is the case, go to the next room and sit and start writing. What all things you know and what all you don't know? What all things you know and what all things you don't know? Make a list. Then we know what you know and you don't know. And whatever you don't know, I will start teaching about it. And Auspan Sky writes, when I went and sat with a paper and pen to write what all I don't know, what all I know, First I was asked to write what all I know. More than two hours I was scratching, scratching, scratching my head. Finally I understood I do not know anything. Whatever I know is very superficial knowing. It is time you search for the master. You are qualified to get a master. As long as you have the illusion as long as you have the feeling, things are going well. Without, they are going well. Naturally, you are in great danger. You are in an illusion that everything is going well. That is the reason you are not in search of master or you are not in search of spiritual teachings. If a man is not having the quest even to search for spiritual teachings, then you can be sure that he is living a life in which you do not even know that you do not know. That's all. So, not even searching for a master or a spiritual teaching shows very clearly he is in a deep darkness without even knowing he is in darkness. If you have had a glimpse of light at least once in a while, only then you will know that you are in darkness. If you never had even a glimpse of light, you cannot know, you will not even know that you are in darkness. A small story. One man who is born blind went to a doctor and asked, Doctor, can you help me? Can I have my vision back? Can I see? Doctor said, don't worry, I will do some operation. You will have your vision. Then you can walk without stick. The blind man replied, Doctor, I understand two things. You will do operation, I understand. I will have my eyes back, I will understand. But how can I walk without stick? Long time, he was walking only with stick. So he started thinking, stick is something related to, is very walking itself. He cannot walk without stick. Doctor said, I cannot answer your question intellectually. Only when you get your eyes, you will understand. Then you will understand, you don't need stick. Same way, only when you get a glimpse of light, you will understand in what, with which darkness, in what type of darkness you are living. <coughs> then you will start searching for master or spiritual teachings. Thank you. Anybody? Yes. When all the masters are manifested from divine manifestation, mm -hmm. why is it that the person is attracted to a particular master? Mm -hmm. Please be seated. Ramakrishna says a beautiful example. 
same fish mother cooks in 10 different way for 10 or for different children same fish for 10 all their 10 all are 10 kids she cooks in a different way one fish she makes it as a sweet dish one she she makes it hot spicy things what she simply fries and gives. Ten different tastes. Based on the taste and expectation, she cooks and feeds. Actually, we have our own mental setup. We have our own expectation. Divine fulfills you the way in which you want it. For some people who are well read, intellectual, for them, Shankara suits. The ideology of Shankara suits more for him. But Meera and Chaitanya never suits for him. He doesn't feel attracted to Meera and Chaitanya because they are always singing and dancing. He says, what foolish thing it is, continuously singing and dancing. The guy who is attracted to Meera and Chaitanya, an ecstatic love, who is in bliss, he says, what foolish thing, continuously sitting and analyzing. Drop all those foolish things. Person who is head oriented, he gets attracted towards the intellectual stuff. Person who is heart oriented, he gets attracted towards the devotional things. Person who is being oriented, he gets attracted towards the meditation. There are so many paths, so many masters, so many ways. Each person who is centered on different energy, person who continuously thinks, 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 for him, Jnana Yoga is the path, intellectual path. Person who continuously is centered on emotions, who is emotional, he is the Bhakti Yogi, for him Bhakti Yoga is the path. Person who is more being oriented, silent, introvert, for him meditation is the path. Whomsoever is based on any individual or particular energy, particular mental setup, he is or she is attracted towards that type of guru, towards that type of philosophy, towards that type of master. So that master, that guru, that philosophy attracts him. That's what yesterday I was telling. If you find your right master, Suddenly something will happen between you and him. Synchronicity. Like almost like a falling in love. It's not even falling in love, raising in love. When you fall with normal persons, it is falling in love. With masters, it is raising in love. You suddenly feel he's, he's expressing what you think. He's exactly expressing what you always wanted to hear, you will see simply your heart feels in tune with him. He is your master. Till that happens, continue to search. That is the right way of seeking. That is the reason with somebody you get attracted. With somebody you get attracted, somebody attracts you. Yes. Ramana Maharshi answers this question. Are you alive? Hmm? That itself is a qualification. <laughs> that is the qualification. Because the very life is bestowed on you by divine. Very life is a divine grace. Being alive is more than enough. That is the maximum qualification. Or that is the qualification which is needed. That is more than enough to receive the divine grace. Nothing more is necessary. Else will be taken care by the divine. Here is a question. Mention two different masters from India. What is the difference between them and what is the similarity between them? 
One thing, our mind is such, we always analyze. But the masters are beyond your mind. When you try to analyze them, you always fail and fall. First of all, you can compare between two, two objects. You can compare what is the difference between this flower wash and this flower wash and what is the similarity. Because you know the shape, size, front view, back view, everything. But in the case of masters, they are infinity. Can you say what is the difference between two infinity and what is the similarity between two infinities? The difference between two infi infinity, the similarity between two infinities is the difference and similarity between these two masters whom you mentioned. That's all. Any other questions? Yes. This is one of the uh, important problems the modern day seekers face. Thousands of followers. And one thing, before answering, I have to, I myself have to confess. Here you get at least the chance to question me. If you have some relatives in India, especially South India, ring up and talk to them or ask them, how many people attend my programs? Sometimes 40,000. 40,000 or 50,000. The meditation camps we conduct are attended 40,000, 50,000. I myself don't give opportunity or not able to give opportunity to all the seekers to put their questions or have direct touch. But I tell you, the living master, by his teachings, let me explain to you in this way. One side people feel that they are not able to ask questions, get doubts cleared individually. Other side people always come and tell me, Swamiji, exactly what I thought what I wanted to ask, you are responded, you are replied. Whenever the question is really sincere, whenever it's a quest, you will see the living master answers it. The living master guides you. The possibility is more in living master than the old dead masters. Because with the dead masters, it is not that it is not possible in dead masters. It is possible. But you have forgotten the language in which they speak. Their language is too subtle. You need to drop your inner chattering totally. Only then you can listen to them. With alive masters, I have a loudspeaker. Even if you have inner, inner chattering, I am more loud than your loudness. If you are loud, I am little more loud. But with old masters, they became so silent, so subtle, but they continue to speak to you. Be very clear. They never stop communicating with you. They are alive, continuously communicating. I can say communion. They are in communion with you. Continuously. The problem is one side communication. You have forgotten the day in which you have to listen to them. You have forgotten the language in which they speak. They speak in the language of silence. You do not know that language. You know all the other languages. You know English, you know Hindi, you know Tamil, you know all the languages. You know Telugu, everything. But you do not know the language of silence. Even when I say the word silence, you understand 
you refer the meaning of Oxford Dictionary. Oxford Dictionary's meaning for the word silence is not real silence. Please understand, silence means what dictionary says? Soundlessness. But soundlessness is not the silence which I want to convey. It's a vibrant, alive energy through which they are continuously communicating with you. But we have forgotten that language. We are not able to relate in that language. We can't talk to them, relate with them in that language because we have forgotten. But living masters, they express in the language which you understand. They speak in the language which you can, in which you can relate. So the possibility is more with the living masters than the old masters. That's all. And with the old masters, you can always project your ego and satisfy yourself. But with living masters, you can never project. You will be continuously knocking on it. Yes. Please little loud, pardon me, little loud. You can come here. They, 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 it's not just a language of silence, but telepathically mm -hmm. also they can communicate. That is what I say, silence. That is what I, I say, the word. You see, the problem is telepathy, all these, I get the commands, all these things, most of the time, is expression of our ego. Our own ego plays the double game. You speak for yourself and you speak for him also. You stand in front of a statue and say, Oh God, please bless me and give me your blessings. And you stand, you stand for the statue and say, I bless you my son, don't worry. <laughs> I accept your prayers. Most of the time, you play both roles. Most of the time, your logic plays both the roles. And when you are intense, sometimes you even become schizophrenia. That's the reason most of the people start acting or behaving like gods. Start speaking like gods. They express even few powers. I always tell them, divine means intelligence. There are um, so many things going on in India. People fall into a sort of hysteric state and start predicting about the future, the intuition telling all these things. And it is considered that as if the God has land descended on them and people worship them. I always tell them, no, if God descends, you will see only the joy and bliss in their face. But these intuition tellers, they are always suffering, they are in tension, they are in restlessness. If you have seen in India, the intuition tellers are the people who are possessed by God, the so-called God. You can see them. They are restless, agitated, shouting and creating noises. They, it can never be God. When divine descends, it is so beautiful, blissful, ecstatic because God is filled with love and energy. He radiates love. He radiates energy. He expresses compassion. Never the restlessness. Many times, we play both roles. Don't cheat yourself playing both roles. That's the only warning which I want to give. Otherwise, continue with any path. No problem. It is up to you. Thank you.